Welcome back to the latest episode of Riding the Wall Podcast with your undisputed tag team champions of the podcast world where we are going to give you our honest opinions, whether you like it or not. So, um, I We're guess, good at that. Yeah, we are good at that. Making some Chase Elliott fans mad, usually. But um, how was your week? Not bad. About your normal. About yeah. your normal. Yeah. I didn't really do much this week. Uh, lay around, relax, work. Eric was on the eye racing a couple nights. He had one Sunday at Bristol Dirt, which I guess it was like a charity race. I thought it was going to be something different. Yeah, I remember. The, <clears throat> yeah, I was and, up here watching Richmond with you and Jess, and you guys were yeah, keeping she, an eye on it. Yeah, it was, it was kind of weird. It was three different classes of cars on the track at the same time so it really it wasn't like a race it was kind of it looked like a demo derby to be honest but uh but he had another race again on monday and uh, he did pretty good with them he he had um he had to go to the concy he had a wreck in the heat race had to go to his concy won the concy and then he started the feature in i want to say 14th came back and made it all the way up to third and then uh he had another, somebody spun out right in front of him, and he got collected up in that. He ended up coming back and finishing 7th. So after that wreck, he went back to like 14th or whatever. He ended up coming back to 7th in a few laps. So he did pretty good. So it's been kind of fun watching him do that. And, um, has, your, has, has your old man got in, it, got in on any of those yet? Not that I know of. Um, we went out there. He got it one day last week, and we went out there when Eric was setting it up for him. And... Um, he was kind of playing around with it, and he was having fun. I told him, I said, it's nothing like being in a real car, so if you <laughs> don't even think it's going to be. It's, it's kind of like playing a computer game. So, But uh, he did better than I thought he would when he was first starting out, and he was having fun. So I think it won't be too long before we see him on a few of them. Yeah. Um, I haven't called him yet. I've been trying to give him a few days of practice before I call him to see how he's doing. But uh, that's coming up here real soon. So, Heck yeah. Because I know he'll make fun of me if <clears> I was doing that, so I'm going to make fun of him a little bit. And right. Give him a little bit of that <laughs> same treatment back. But uh, but that was my week. Um, uh, had would, a, you, would you... Uh, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to get into the Richmond race. That, that's where I was going yeah. to. What did you think about it? I was very much surprised. I thought it was going to have a lot more drama cautions I, thought, yeah. <laughs> I was not expecting three cautions and two of those being stage breaks yep. you know the first caution of the ra- actual caution of the race comes with 10 to go did not see it coming at all so i think that kind of put a little damper on it you know it kind of it was great racing it was just we didn't get the opportunity for issues you right. know we didn't we had a lot of green flag pit stops you know uh things of that nature but it, it was, wasn't the normal richmond usually there's quite a few cautions oh yeah you know, there was it was a it was a great day for green flag racing and brought strategy into it with the green flag pit stops and but yeah i yeah we watched it together so i mean we talked about it at the time how you know you're just used to them cautions breaking up the monotony a little bit and adding a little excitement to it and things yeah. like that but you know, i think it's good every once in a while to have a race like that yeah, and that's that's what we're supposed to have, yeah. right? We're that's the kind of race we're supposed to have. It just doesn't happen very often, especially with these cars and how aggressive these guys are with these cars now. We're used to seeing a lot more cautions, a lot more uh, dust ups. And... Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was Talladega last year, or the year before, where there was just like one caution, or yeah. you know, something in it, and it was like. I mean, I'm that guy that's like, I don't want to see the big one. You know, I don't want to see these drivers get hurt or injured or scared or killed or anything like that. You know, I want them to race. Mm -hmm. And just sitting watching that race, I was like, good Lord, you don't understand how how different a race is when there's cautions involved, you know, to watch a super. It's, you know, Bristol and Richmond and Talladega and Daytona. You know, the short tracks or the really big tracks, you're used to seeing all those cautions. Mm -hmm. And when you don't see them, it really... Yeah, you're just waiting for it the whole time. You're waiting for that caution, waiting for it, and it just never happened. Right. Um, Which is good. But like I said, at the same time, it it just, it it feels different. 
it doesn't feel right, but it is right. Yeah. Kind of so. like waiting for your wife to say, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, it just don't, it never comes, but you, it, it, <laughs> if it feels right, it's just not right. <laughs> well, I've got to say in our relationship, it's me the one, I'm always the one saying I'm sorry. I don't know what I did, but well, me too. I'm always the me one too. that's got to say I'm sorry. Even though I know she did it, or I know she's up to something. But I'm the one that has to say I'm sorry before life There's gets back to normal. There's even times when, when and usually like if she if she's wrong, I'll be like, look, I'm wrong. I messed up. See how easy that is? That's all you got to say. You and, know? <laughs> and she's looking at you with them, right. that F you look. You right. know, I get it. I've, I've got those quite a few times. Well, the only thing we had at Richmond that I can think of to even talk about is, you know, the Larson Hamlin, but that really wasn't a whole lot. I well, mean, first Larson. First time winner. Well, yeah, season. we do have Busher. I mean, as far as just the actual racing goes, um, you know, I think everybody was waiting to see Hamlin Larson round two, and it just didn't happen. I think um, Larson just kind of moved Hamlin out of the way when he had some fresher tires. He looked like the fastest guy on the track, and Hamlin was just well, in the way, so he just punted him out of the way and kept on going. Right, but I think Hamlin knows that he would have done the same thing. Oh, you know? yeah. I mean, that's, I don't think that's why there was a round two. Or yeah, and I like think that. Hamlin knows that it could have been worse. Yeah. You know, he could have really threw him up into the wall, but he didn't. But, um, yeah, we got Busher. We <laughs> I just, I just seen a text there that kind of. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes. Did you lose your train of thought? Yes, I did. I did. Busher, Busher, Son first. Of a bitch. First time, uh, Busher, first win of the season for him, on a on a short track. I can't believe it. I knew it might you happen. You couldn't believe that Busher might win. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Because <laughs> because of our fantasy picks last week. I picked Hamlin to win. And I've had Hamlin penciled into Richmond for a while. Um, and H.R. Scotty picked Busher. So, you know, I got second. There's only one person that could finish ahead of me. And, of course, it had to be H.R. Scotty. He's the only one that picked Busher. And uh, he beat me. But, unlike normal times, usually... Me and Scott are like, screw you, I'm gonna beat you this week. But you know, here lately, he gave me he gave me congrats when I when I won. So I gave him congrats when he won with the busher. Uh, we didn't we He's didn't play all pick. mean like we like That's we normally a, do. Yeah. We, it was a good pick. It was a good pick. I'd really I kind of expected Busher to finish well. I didn't expect him to win, but I expect him to finish pretty good. Well, I mean, and it R doesn't surprise <clears throat> me that he won. Right, but. RFK dominated that race. Every, they, it's like every lap that Busher didn't lead, Brad led, you know, almost. Yeah. You it know? seemed like it was either RFK or 23XI. Right. And if they wasn't in front, they were filling out the top five. Right. You know, it was that was the whole race. Um, but, you know, RFK has been making strides for a couple years now. I mean, they've been just... They got kicked in the nuts as soon as they started. Yeah, Brad know. Brad joining that team has made a, a huge impact. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's insane. And and another thing that gets me, it's not they are operating differently than these other teams are because if you look at, like I said, twenty three XI, you've got Bubba and you've got Reddick. They're kind of they're kind of um, a little far apart with where they are, you know. When you when you think of that team, you think of one driver that's head and shoulders above the other, which for me I think that's Reddick over Bubba. Absolutely. Um, but Bubba's now. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Bubba's trash. I'm just saying that there's a difference. There's a difference. You can tell a difference between them two cars. When you look at RFK, you can't see a difference. They're both right well, there. I mean, either they both missed the setup and they're both in the back, or they're both in the front. Right. But I think what some of these teams are doing is we're going to set this car up this way and we're going to set this car up 180 degrees different than this one you know they've got two cars they're setting them up different styles 
and you see which one's working and then we'll adjust the car that needs adjusted from there yeah but with rfk it's like you're seeing them both in the top five or you're seeing them both in 25th yeah you know what i mean so they're they're on to something there and i don't know i don't know how a lot of these teams are setting their cars up you know maybe it's you know denny hamlin likes a tighter car than william byron does so they you know these guys hey i want mine looser i want mine tighter you know whatever yeah. however they do it but it seems like making the addition to brad Keselowski to that team he came in and he said here's what we're going to do we're going to do this this and this with both cars and we're going to make adjustments from there because yeah. if they both if they're both doing good they're both doing great right if both cars are struggling both the drivers are struggling and you see that every week yeah so what you're saying is they're making a general setup to both cars making an identical car and then they're just tweaking it to give driver preference right and that's that i'm piggybacking on exactly what you were saying mm -hmm. that you can't tell a difference in the performance of the two drivers not the cars but the two drivers right because if one rfk car is in the back so is the other one yeah if one's in the front, so is the other one, you mm -hmm. know, and it's... Yeah, the only time you see them a world apart is when one of them's been in an accident or one of them, you know, ran over some debris or something like that. They've had something that they can't help. It's not, they didn't miss it on setup or strategy. Right. Because when, when it's when it's a race of setup and strategy like Richmond was, you're going to see both of them in the same spot or right around the same spot. And at Richmond, it happened to be up front. And they wasn't letting go of it, and I don't blame them, you know. Yep. Um. <clears throat> well, I mean, it was the same way at Bristol last year when Busher won there. Brad yeah. was right up there. Mm -hmm. I think he was top three, top five. That, yeah. That, that race, too. And that'll, that'll be another combo to watch at Bristol, you know, because they seem to have nailed it last year, so you yeah. know they're going to just continue well, that. And I, uh, and I think I said that after Busher uh, crossed the checkered, you know, the start-finish line this past Sunday was when me, you, and Jess was sitting there watching that race, was if I was Busher, I'd be telling them, put this car in the trailer and don't touch it till Bristol. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that would be a wise move. <clears throat> Let's see. What else did we have at, at uh, Richmond that might... I'm trying to think. I'm just going off of memory. I don't have any notes or here in front of me. Um... You know, the Toyotas were fast, the Fords were fast, the Chevys were kind of just MIA, you know. And I make a joke saying it's every week it's a Chevy track, but this really was not a Chevy track. It was, if you were in a Chevy, you were, you were way back there, but, uh, which I don't, I don't really like that, but, um, but let's... That's really all I've, I've. I don't have a whole lot about Richmond just because either. it was just. It I was, was green to, to checker. I, I was glad Ford got a third win. <laughs> I yeah. predicted them. To, I predicted them to have six by the end of the season. Yeah. And I still think it's achievable. Uh, yeah, six is definitely achievable. So, it's a. Uh, I was glad to see Ford get another win. I was glad to see another first time winner for the season get in to the yeah. chase. You know, Busher. Uh, I like him a lot. You know, he's a respectable man respectable driver seems like a hell of a teammate for brad mm -hmm. um i just really like the dude um so i was glad to see that um you know now we go to go to michigan where i think we're gonna have another first time winner you think so yeah i think kevin harvick i mean he's owned michigan for so long it's like phoenix and, i mean he's owned yeah and this is gonna be his last time at michigan so he needs to go out with a win. That's why I picked him. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's it's a Chevy track, but I think a Ford's going to win. Just like, just like there's so many times that, so many times this year that Toyota has dominated a race and a Chevy ends up winning, or a Ford has dominated a race and Chevy ends up winning. They're just, they're right there, and then when something happens, they just take the lead, or it's, it's a, you know, it's a green-white checkered, and, and they happen to be right there at the front. There's so many times that Ford or Toyota should have won races this year, and they just didn't. Yeah, it seems like um, 
on those ones where Chevy, Chevy comes into it at the end, it's because it's a it's because it's a green white checker or a near the end of the race restart, and the Chevys line up together, and yeah. they push better than the Fords and the Toyotas are. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, yeah, I think if we'd had a lot more races that just go green to checker like we did at Richmond, I don't think Chevy would have twelve. I think the others would. I think Ford would probably already have six, at least. You know. Um, I think that number would be a little bit more even. But uh, Chevy sitting at 12, Toyota sitting at 7, and Ford sitting at 3 now. After Richmond going into Michigan. Well, I took, uh, uh, I rode, fantasy-wise, I rode with uh, Chase Elliott this week. I haven't used him yet. So mm -hmm. he was my pick for the week. I think if he's going to come, if he's going to snap out of this shit that he's in, he's going to do it at Michigan. And, you know, and one reason I went with Chase Elliott was because I looked, I looked to see Kyle Larson up front. I looked to see William Byron up front. And if Chase Elliott's up front with them towards the end of this race, Chase can pull it off. And he can get in the chase. He'll, he'll be in the playoffs. He could. I mean, Chase Elliott, he's one of them guys that can just about win anywhere. Yeah, I mean, he's right there with Larson and Kyle Busch. Can win anywhere. Pretty close, but not yeah, there pretty yet. close. Um, he just, I just don't know if he's going to get it. Um, he's definitely making it dramatic. That's for sure. Uh, if he's going to win to get in, he's making it dramatic because he's getting to the point where he almost has to. And I've wrote the points there on the big board with the bubble. Right now. We're sitting with Kozlowski at 14th, Bubba's at 15th, and McDowell is at 16th. So they're in right now. But McDowell is 18 points above the cutoff line. Now we look at below the cutoff line, that's where things get interesting because you've got some guys that could make some moves here in the next few weeks with Ty Gibbs, Almondinger, Suarez at 17, 18, and 19. Gibbs is only 18 out. Almondinger's 22 out, Suarez 34 out, but if you look at the four races we've got left until we get to the playoffs, you've got two road courses, which that's Almondinger's strength, that's Suarez's strength. That's Elliott's strength. That's Elliott's strength. And, and Ty Gibbs is not doing too bad. No, I took him to Chicago, and he got me, I think, ace. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, you know. So, I mean, he's not doing too bad. I mean that's that's not an easy hurdle to cl hurdle to climb, because Elliot is sitting back in twentieth, forty points out. He's below those three, and sitting right behind Elliot is Bowman at forty two points out. Well, here's here's how I'm looking at it: is we got two races left before the playoffs that are going to be bumper to bumper train racing, and we've got two races that are going to be on road courses. Ty One, Gibbs is successful at both of those styles of racing. Mm -hmm. He gets in that Toyota pack. He's he's pretty solid. Anybody could come out of that pack and win the race. We all know that. Right. You know, anybody could jump out. Yeah. And and he's proven to be worthy to be on the road courses. I wouldn't put him up there with Almendinger and Chase yet. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he's twenty years old. And he's doing what he's doing already. So, right. If he keeps keeps his head on, he's gonna be one to watch. Oh yeah, definitely. I think within the next, how long do you think it'll be before Ty Gibbs gets a win? I'm gonna say it won't be this year. I don't think it'll be this year. I agree with that. I think it will be. Within the first six races of next year. Really? Yeah. I could see him pulling a Vegas or a Phoenix or something like that. I was going to say, I, I was thinking he will get his first win probably within the first half of next year. Yeah, I'm going to say the first six races. So, I mean, I don't see... He's not going to be waiting a long time for his wins, that's for sure. I mean, he's, he's with a power team. Toyota, they have their shit together. They Seems know. like he's putting the work in. Yes. And, and he don't seem like the aggressive little shithead that was in Xfinity <laughs> he's he's minding his P's and Q's and we've talked about this before he's he's turning his laps he's learning 
he's, he's following behind some of these these uh, these veterans legends. that that know what they're doing. So he's learning. He's yeah. putting in the work right now. He's learning. Um, he seems to be a totally different driver. And if he keeps going the way he's going, I don't mind pulling for the kid. Right. You know. I'm right there too. Once he turns into that aggressive little prick that he was last year, I don't. I don't know if I can do that. You know. I'd say but, he's uh, probably gonna wait for Kyle Busch to retire before he turns into that guy. <laughs> probably. <laughs> <Again>. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, Almondinger coming up. He's won the Indy Road course before, so he's very familiar with the track. Plus, we've got, let's not forget, we've got SVG and that... Uh, button. Well, the button. I keep wanting to say Benjamin Button whenever. I know that's not his <laughs> name, but <laughs> I keep wanting to say Benjamin Button. But, yeah, we have Button. We have that Basecki guy that is yep. from Australia along with SVG, they're all going to be in the Indy Road course. Um, so that's going to shake things up there. But, that's going to put a damper on this bubble. But here, here's what I'm going to tell you, too. And we've talked about this in the past few weeks, too. It won't be one of those road course ringers that win Indianapolis. It won't be. You don't think so? No. Nope. It won't be one of them that win Watkins Glen, either. You'll see NASCAR, full-time NASCAR driver, win both of them road courses. I think you're right with that. Yeah. So you're saying it won't be SVG, Basecki, or Button? Right. Well, I don't think, I don't really, Button's a very good driver. Don't get me wrong. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but I just don't They're think all he's talented. in the quality of equipment. Right. Um, <clears throat> but we know SVG drove for Trackhouse last time. I expect him to probably be driving for Trackhouse this time. Right in that same car. Yeah. <laughs> and we know Basecki has already signed to drive with RCR for that race so they're both going to be in pretty good equipment but it, it wouldn't surprise me to see with Andy and Watkins Glen it wouldn't surprise me to see an Amendinger, Chase Elliott, Tyler Reddick um, one of those caliber maybe even a Logano you talking Indy? yeah Andy and Watkins Glen okay. yeah. You know, both yeah I've got a good horses. handful of road course drivers that I like to choose from well but I'm not even talking about fantasy I'm just talking about full-time NASCAR drivers that could win those two races. And I think one of them will over one of these road course ringers coming yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind seeing SBG, Balecki, and Button, see them guys come into a full-time mm -hmm. NASCAR ride and showcase their talents for a whole season. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying I don't think they have the talent to win, but I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I don't. I don't see it happening at Indy. Um, I think a lot of things, the planets just align just right for SVG to win at Chicago. I'm it, not taking anything away from his no, talents. No, I think it's just. Not. But you and I have that mentality of a race car driver, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's one of them things of like, all right, you're a one trick pony. You showed mm -hmm. up at one of my races and you won. Yeah, you yeah. earned it. Good job, buddy. Yeah. But <laughs> it's not look, gonna happen it, twice. It, I promise you, it won't happen twice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, we're right there together on that. I think, and, and you know, with Chicago, like we said before, that Chicago, all the drivers were new to that. Yeah. So they were all in the same shape I mean, as SVG. SVG but, performed. Oh, he did. Yeah. I mean, he looked comfortable as hell. So, right. but I just, I'm, I'm with you. I don't think it's going to happen. No. Nope. That lightning in a bottle is not going to happen twice in the same year. Um, we've just been racing at Watkins Glen way too long for somebody new to come in and just win that. And same with Indy. I mean, we've only been running it, what, four or five four years. years. And and we're going to have a familiar face win that one, too. But uh, It wouldn't surprise me to see Chase Briscoe pull out an Indy win. <clears throat> you think so? Yeah. yeah he doesn't do too me. bad up there, does he? No, he don't. I don't really think of him when I think of a yeah, road course. Right. You don't think of him at Watkins Glen, Sonoma, but I always think of him at Indy. Yeah. Because he performs pretty damn well there. Yeah, he does do pretty good. What was it, a couple of years ago? He was right there in the front with yeah. Denny Hamlin. They, them two got into a little mm -hmm. scuffle. But, uh, yeah, you're right. I he's never really thought my, about he's Chase He's one of Briscoe. my boys. Yeah. Almost wore my Chase Briscoe shirt today, but I didn't. Didn't want to get it dirty? Well, it was just hot, and I know it was going to be outside all day. Yeah. So. So do you think Elliot or Bowman? You think Elliot's going to win one and get in? Yeah. What about leagues. what about Bowman? No. Not so you, one of, so not one think, of these not one of these four races. 
So you think <clears throat> we're going to have three Hendrick guys in the, in the playoffs and not four? Well, unless, you know, like, I mean, we could have a, I mean, you could have a Corey LaJoy pull out a win. And then, of course. then only two people get in on points. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I'm not going to say Bowman won't get in. But as far as getting in on a win, though, you know, I don't think it'll happen. Um, I think you'll see Chase Elliott get in on a win. Possibly Almondinger getting in on a win. He could. I don't. I don't think he's going to win either one of them two road courses. I, I would love to see him win. I'm. A, I'm a. We well, love the dinger. Yes, yeah. I'm a big dinger fan, but uh, I just don't know if if he's got it for this year. Um. So if Elliott wins one, that's going to knock Brad Bubba. Or McDowell out. Bubba and McDowell have a little little gap there between them. Yeah. I mean, Bubba's kind of safe. Well, I mean, I wouldn't. You're never safe if you're in fifteenth, but. But you know what? But if it, if we have no new winners, it wouldn't surprise me to see McDowell pull a win out of Daytona or I, or Watkins. All these next four races play into McDowell's. Handbook, Wheelhouse. you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he's he's good at at, at the honest, road courses. And honestly, I mean, Daytona and Michigan play into Bubba's wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, you know, I mean, these last four races play into Brad, Bubba, McDowell. Brad, I would give him more at Michigan and Daytona, not so much the road courses. Right. Bubba, same thing. McDowell is good for all four of them. Chase Elliott's good at all four of them. I think Suarez would be pretty good at all four of them. Not this year. He's having a. I don't know what's going on with him. There's something in his head. It yeah. Ain't, it ain't it, his equipment, and it ain't his talent. Something is in his head, and and it's not something that. I don't think it's something that any fan could pinpoint. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't know him personally, but there's something in that boy's head right now that's been there all season. You think it's pressure? I don't. I don't know. I just. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's a thing that any one of us fans could could know or figure out. I think it's something personal. I don't know if it's work. I don't know if it's home. Don't know. Don't know what you know. But there's something. You know, they were in the new gen cars last year and this year. There is a huge difference. Yeah. And Daniel Suarez between last year and this year. And that's Ross another... Chastain, not so much, other than he's weaned off of being so aggressive. He's yeah. weaned off slowly. But he is still it's still not uncommon to see Ross Chastain right there in the fifth to twelfth place every race. Yeah, I think kinda like what we were talking about earlier, I think with that team they're not like RFK. They're not right there together. They are. I mean, you might see Ross Chastain up towards the front of the pack, and you might see Daniel Suarez down in fifteenth to twentieth place. They're just kind of, they're they're too far apart. Um, as teammates, they should be closer together. They should be like a Logano or Blaney, uh, Busher and Brad right. type of, of situation, but they're not. So I think, no, it's... and it's not the equipment because they have good equipment. Well, I mean, look what SVG did in this one race. Yeah. In his, I mean, in he's a, got more in wins track, than Daniel Suarez. <laughs> right. In a track house car, he's raced one race and he's got more wins than Suarez. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, you don't see. It's the same thing with. Uh, oh, um, it was right there on the tip of my tongue. I'll come back to it. It'll hit me in a minute. But, but it the, wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I don't. I'm, I. Kind of agree with you as far as Suarez is not going to do it this year on Indy and Watkins Glen, but it wouldn't surprise me if he did, just because his talents better suit a road course. You know what I mean? RCR. That's where I was going with Kyle Busch's car and Austin Dillon's car. I don't know what's going on there. Um, maybe they are setting them setting them up the same, and 
I mean, we all know how great of a driver Kyle Busch is. Not not everybody, even being in the sport for five and ten years, can be the level of driver that Kyle Busch is. Mm-hmm. You know, but I don't know what's going on there because it's seeming like those cars are set up completely different. Yeah. But I I could honestly see Richard being like set them both up set them both up the same every week. I want to see what the problem is. Set both cars up the same. I can tell you what the problem is. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but but if he's making that decision to say set them both up the same or is he saying to these two team to the 3 and the 8 team, set them up however your driver wants them set up. Yeah. You know, and I think if if that's the case, I think Big Richard needs to step in and say, "Hey, number eight, number three, set them up the same." This week we're setting them up the way Kyle wants them set up. Next week we'll set them up the way Austin wants them set up. But I want to see what the problem is. Yeah, you know? I can see that because I think Kyle could on Austin's week if they're setting them up different. On Austin's week, I think you would see in the first 20 laps of the race, I think you'd hear Kyle Busch's radio <laughs> blowing up saying, I'm coming in, screw yeah. this, you know, do this A, B, and C. <laughs> do A, B, and C, and Kyle would get the car there by the end of the race. Oh, yeah. You know, he'd have it where he wanted it by the end of the race. But maybe if they're being set up, the way Kyle's driving, Austin don't know how to get it there by the end of the race. Yeah. So I I'd be interested to know that and and I can definitely see in that scenario I, I can definitely see if we've got an Austin set up in it I think Kyle can drive that better than Austin could than Kyle's. Austin can drive a Kyle setup. Right, and that's what you know I'm what saying. I mean? Yes. I can definitely see that. He's a yeah. better will man. Yeah. Just like he Kyle can adapt Larson, to you know? whatever whatever you're giving him, he can adapt. He's going to improve it throughout the race right. to to like to his standards, but yeah. I can definitely see that. And that's to me that would shine the light on what do we need to do to grow. Yeah. As far as if I'm Richard Childress. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying I'm replacing Austin Dillon or I'm replacing Kyle Busch, but I would be saying it, during this off season, if you guys don't care, work together. Kyle, yeah. teach him something. You yeah. know, or and, and I think that's probably what he's doing. I mean, let's we have to we've got an established driver and we've got a, a driver that needs a little help. Right. Cause, so let's let's suit the established driver so he can continue to win, and let's improve the younger guy while we have this experienced guy in the garage. Right. I said know. the same thing with Indianapolis Colts years ago, that when they drafted Andrew Luck in the draft and they let Peyton Manning go, I was so pissed over that. I mean, Peyton Manning is like one of my heroes, you know? He's a football god. Yeah. You know, and, at least in this area of the country. I mean, he, yeah, I mean, <laughs> my youngest son was born right after all that happened, and I named him Peyton for that reason. Mm-hmm. Because Peyton Manning was such a, big part of my uh i don't know what you'd call it but i really looked up to the dude still do mm-hmm. you know great great man great player uh, and he's funny as hell oh yeah you know oh, the, <laughs> to see him in these commercials he, and stuff yeah. like it's and i appreciate <laughs> i appreciate a great sense of humor oh yeah and but you know i mean to me in my ideal world it was draft andrew luck and keep peyton manning Mm-hmm. Because you want Andrew Luck at least for one season. I mean, ideally, I'd say two or three, but at least for one season, let Andrew Luck ride that wood and learn from Peyton Manning. But it didn't happen like that. Yeah. And if Richard can get Austin and Kyle together, even in the off season, to where I mean, I'm sure they laugh and joke and cut up and stuff like that. They're teammates. Mm-hmm. But. I would really like to see Austin Dillon. I'd like to see any one of them 38 drivers gain knowledge from Kyle Busch. Yeah. It's only going to make our sport better. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. And it's obvious Austin Dillon's going to be the the longtime face of RCR. 
Yeah. I mean, it's his grandson. I mean, that's, that's a given. He's not getting rid of him. Right. Although he did get rid of Ty. Yeah. That's... <laughs> I mean, he didn't bring him in, really. But... <laughs> Black it's... sheet. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> you got to go somewhere else and learn. I'm going to keep Austin here. <laughs> <laughs> I got to teach him how to grow his mustache. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, and I think that's not just with RCR, with with Kyle and Austin. I think that it's like Gibbs with Ty and and guys like Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex. You've got these older guys that have been around forever. They now's the time to be teaching them this right. stuff. And I know? think that's what Brad and Chris Busher are doing. Mm-hmm. I think that's what and it's working. That's what Logano is doing with Ryan Blaney and Austin Cendrick. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not seeing it out of Austin Cendrick yet. So, Roger, if you're listening. You need to put my ass in that number two car. I'll do it. I'll do the job. And yeah. I'll, do, you'll, be I'll make, push, you'll be pushing Blaney or Logano up the track, won't absolutely. you? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I will make you more money than Austin Cindric is right now. <laughs> and I'll do it for half the price. Yeah. So, it's a... Uh, that ain't bad, considering you don't even know what the price I, is. It, yeah, I mean... Yeah, that ain't too bad. I mean, you pay, I'm not making nothing now, so, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't take much to get me there, you know right. what I'm saying? You, you feed me and put me up in a hotel, I mean, hell, we'll, we'll rock and roll, buddy. So, so in, in, let's, if you're Big Rick, you're Rick Hendrick right now, and you're looking at these standings, what are you, what are you saying at the team meeting on Monday? You know, what, you've got Larson, you've got Byron, who are just knocking it out of the park this year. With Byron is, what, four wins? Larson would probably have five or six wins if it wouldn't have been for people messing with him. Right. You know, Hamlin took him out of a couple. Chastain took him out of one or two. Um, so he's got, what, two wins? I think he would have, like I said, five or six maybe if people wasn't jacking with him. And then you've got Elliott and Bowman, who are a few spots down below the cut line. Um, I'd say this is exactly what I'd say. I love both of you guys like my own kids. But if you don't make the chase, we're going to renegotiate your contract after this season. Yeah, that's an attention getter. Because especially for somebody like Chase Elliott, right? Because I mean that's how I see it, and I, I would say the same thing to Smoke. You know what I'm saying? I, I would say Tony Stewart needs to do the same thing, mm-hmm. and because I mean. Let's not, as fans, let's not take for granted that there's some of these guys out there that are, fi- that are fielding four-car teams. That does a lot for our sport. We, mm-hmm. A lot of fans don't realize that. But there's not many owners out there that can field a four-car team. And that's the right. most cars allowed by a team. Mm-hmm. So for these guys to be pocketing out that much money to support a four-car team and I'm an owner, all four of those cars better be in the top 16 when the chase starts. Yeah, I mean, you've got 16 spots. Yeah. It's not like we're an eight-car playoff or we're a 10-car playoff right. and you've got four cars. It's 16, and you've got four cars, four of supposedly the best guys out there. And the reason they're not in that playoffs is because of their... Their, their, um, how do you say it? Their, I wouldn't say their uh, side job, but because I'm because only, of what they wanted to do on their spare time, basically. I'm only going to take very few excuses. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, as an owner, there's not many excuses I would take, but it's one of those things of. Yeah, I mean, you look at <clears throat> you look at Stuart Haas and you look at Hendrick. There's two four car teams. So in Joe Gibbs Racing, there's three four car teams. The only three four car teams. Mm-hmm. So there's twelve spots, and all three of them owners should be saying the same thing. If these four cars are not in the sixteen going to the chase, we're going to renegotiate contract. Yeah. So, and I would put that on driver and crew chief. I would absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It'd be it that would be, yeah, that'd be in a team setting mm-hmm. that these discussions happen yeah. because you've got some really successful small teams like RCR, Richard Childers. Uh, you got 23XI, you've mm-hmm. got 
Penske with three cars. You've got Trackhouse with two cars. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you can damn well count on Kyle Busch is going to be in that chase every year. Yeah. So there's one car from a small team. You can damn well bet Joe Lugano and Ryan Blaney are going to be in that chase. There's two more cars from a small team. And then you throw in Ross Chastain from yeah. another small team. So there's five cars that you can pretty well count on being in that 16. So now we got 11 spots. But we got three, four car teams. Right. One of you ain't making it. Yeah. If you're going to be on this super team, better get your shit together. Yeah. I don't expect, I mean, I, I, I do expect my teams to go out there and have fun and get along and everything else, but I also expect these passionate discussions of fucking listen to me right now because this isn't working. Right. You know, We're gonna and I don't, change it up. I don't care if it's the driver saying that or the crew chief saying that, but something's got to change. Mm hmm. It shouldn't be left all on the owners to say that. Yeah. If I'm an owner, I don't want to see any fun on, on race day. I'm In the pre-race, yeah, let's have fun, cut up, sign some autographs, you know. Celebrating for victory so, lane. Exactly. When it's when that green flag goes, it better be business by everybody. You better have a game face on. You better perform. You know, I mean, we do have, we've got enough races that you can have some bad races and still, still make it. So, yeah. You just figure you're going to have them is what it is and move on. But when it comes time to green flag, you better have your game face on. You better be business. And then afterwards, we can celebrate. We can go back to the playbook, see where we messed up, see what we need to improve. Yeah, things are going to happen. There's going to yes. be blown tires. There's going to be accidents. Yeah. But you take all of that stuff out, now it's on the crew chief and the driver. Mm -hmm. Get your shit together. You know, we're gonna make it work right get some checkered flags yeah if it don't we're gonna talk about money at the end of this season that's the the only way you can get to me in the business the way i was the way that i am in my work life is if you want to if you want to hurt somebody you hit them in the wallet you know and that's that's going to get the most attention the quickest yeah. I've had I've had bad employees that I would send home early in the morning, but when their shift first started, they'd be pissed about it. Well, you don't want to perform up to my standards, go home. When you're missing two or three hundred bucks on your check next week, you'll come back with a new <laughs> attitude. Yeah, that's one of the biggest problems that I'm having in life right now. So I mean that's but that's where that's that's how I do things and that's how you get people's attention the quickest. I mean, yeah, I just seem punch somebody in the nuts. And say, right. that's what you're doing to me every week. Yeah. How's, how are you feeling right now? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's what you're making me feel every day. Right. But you can't do that. Yeah. So hit them in the wallet. And yep. And they will come around. They will come around or mm -hmm. they'll be, or they'll know, be if we have to do this again next season, then we'll talk about driver placement. Look no, where Cole Custer's at I, right I, now. I was going to say, it's kind of like a Cole Custer incident, you know, which... Which I was going to bring up right after we got done talking about this. What what do you think, like, with with this whole silly season going on and, and drivers, some retiring, some thinking about retiring, some are on the fence. It's it's all coming and going of drivers. Do you think Cole Custer gets back in a, in a Stuart Haas ride next year? I don't. Because I, I think I think Almirola is going to be done after this year. I think he should be. I think Truex is coming back. And those are the only two that I know of that are on the fence. I think El Morello should have been done after last season. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, I don't dislike the guy, but I don't think he should have been put in a, going off wins and. Well, he did get that win at New Hampshire. He did, yeah. And I think that's what, that is what kept him right. and, coming back. And I'm not saying he shouldn't be in a car because, I mean, he's a talented driver. Mm -hmm. He really is. And it's not. It's not just Stuart Haas that's having a bad year. It's all Fords. Yeah. It's all Ford owners, you know. So I don't think it's a Eric Amarillo issue so much. I mean, I think he can go out there and he can get a top 15 just about every week, no matter where they're at. Yeah. But. Because he is up front quite often. Right. But that's not, as an owner, that's not okay enough. Right. Yeah. He's you know? not up front enough. Right. Exactly. Um. Because, I mean, 
other than I'm paying you to win races. The other side of that is the sponsors are paying for their car to be seen on TV. Yeah. So they don't show they that don't, guy that's in 23rd spot. No, not at all. And if you're going to keep my company making me money, making us money as a team, my car needs to be on TV. Mm-hmm. So figure it out. Right. Now, <laughs> you know, that's how I would be with Almarola. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that's, but I say this in a loving way because I love my sport. I, I don't want to see NASCAR go away. Mm-hmm. And we've been pretty close to that over the last 10 years. And I don't want it to happen, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was thinking about that earlier today. I was driving down the road and, and, uh, I was thinking, you know, of the two guys, Almirola and Truex, both still on the fence of whether they want to retire or not, and who would take their spot if they did. I can see Almirola retiring just because he's not having a great year. But like you said, that's all Fords. It's not really an, Al- an Almirola issue. That's a Ford issue. Um I see Truex coming back for at least one more year. We'll see how he does next year. I think if I he, had, I think if he had a year like he did last year, he would probably hang it up at the end He's of this year. He's not doing bad this year. But yeah, they've got, got it figured wins. out. They've got three wins. They're a favorite to win the championship. So yeah, I think all that hype and all that excitement of being back on top is going to bring him back for at least one more year, and we'll see what happens after that. Um, if If he was to leave after this year, I think John Hunter Nemechek is going to take his spot. I think that's kind of an obvious... Is there another Gibbs grandson that might be like 11 or something? Not that I know of. (laughs) (laughs) Not that I know of, because I I know um, John Hunter would would have been in that 54 car had it not been for, you know, grandbaby. Right. Um, You know, but uh, because they were suiting him up for... Uh, Kurt Busch's ride last year, and then Grandpa Joe come in and said, "Hey, let's put Ty in that." Cause, so he already had things going in the mix yeah. before you know everything happened. But I think if Truex was to retire, I think John Hunter would be the obvious choice for that. If Almirola retires, who would be the top pick for that for that car? I'm going to tell you right now. I think it'd be SVG. Think so? Yeah. Because I, I can't I say think, that after seeing one race. Well, here's why I say that. The hype around SVG and his one race, you know, he, he comes in for one race, he wins. Everybody's loving the guy. Everybody wants a piece of the guy. But nobody has the room for the guy. Except for maybe these smaller teams like Colling. Now they have an open seat. I'd say Rick Ware Racing probably always going to have an open seat for a little bit. Um, there's just some movement going on but nothing is really open right now um so i think if i'm tony i'm telling almirola you've got this amount of time i need to know by a a certain date what you're doing because we need to move on as a team whether it's going to be you if you want to stay you're going to be here if 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 i was and that's why i don't I, I sit here and say that Almirola needs to be done after this year. But it wouldn't surprise me if he's not going to be back for another year. Because if it was if I was Tony Stewart and Gene Haas, and I knew Almirola was heading out, I would have been the one recruiting Justin Haley and not letting him get away to Rick Ware Racing. True. Because I think he'd be a perfect fit I know. I mean, he's going to a Ford anyway. You know, he's been a Chevy driver his whole career. Mm -hmm. But unless them guys know something about Justin Haley, I don't, which is possible. Yeah. But I would have been the guy recruiting Justin Haley. And Corey LaJoy just signed a contract again. He's staying with Spire Racing. He just signed a contract yesterday or today to stay with them even longer. He would be a good fit for Almirola's seat to me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I've I w- seen it. I'm not going to say I would have been pulling somebody up from up from the Xfinity series, but if I knew Almirola was heading out, I would have been going after Justin Haley or Corey LaJoy. 
One of the two. Yeah. I've seen LaJoy just signed a bigger contract, but I haven't had time to to read it yet. Um, I think I think he sees a lot of things happening at Spire. I think there's an expectation that Andretti is going to join and it's going to change a lot of things for them. Um, but time will tell. And what about Legacy? I mean, you got that two-car team in there as well with um, Eric Gregson Jones and, and Noah Grayson, mm-hmm. you know. And then the 84 car was supposed to be, you know, in six six or eight races this year, but yeah. understandably they haven't been with yeah. what happened with Jimmy and his family. I mean, it's horrible. And I don't blame it for not being in the 84 car this year. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, they they were pocketing the money out to fill this third car. Maybe that's something that they just put on the back burner and they're going to fill three next year. They could. That wouldn't surprise they me could. a bit. I can definitely see them um, taking Toyota's help, seeing where it gets them, and then maybe adding on after that. You know, maybe not next year, given a third car. Let's um, see what Toyota brings to the table, see how we perform, see what changes we need to make, and then, and then possibly given a third car. Because, um, I mean, you got you got Petty and you got Johnson owning those, so money is not going to be an issue, right? I mean, you've got two of the best in the sport ever, so money's not going to be an issue. But I thought uh, Legacy was Chevy. They are Chevy, but they're moving to Toyota next okay, year. Okay, yeah, okay. They yeah, are I Chevy thought you were talking year. about this year. No. Okay. Um, well, talking about Jimmy, they have the uh, Hall of Fame inductees yep. announced today that just got into the newest class. And I think it's a perfect fit. It is. I mean, it's... It, I mean, Donnie Allison is one of them. He should have been in there 10 years ago. Yeah, that should have been opinion. there a long time I'm ago. I'm an Alabama gang kind of guy. Yeah. So, So we, yeah, we had Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss. And Donnie Allison all getting in this year. I think, like you said, it's... It's it's fitting that them two go in together because right. Chad Knauss wouldn't be in there if it wasn't for Jimmy Johnson. And, and Jimmy versa. Johnson wouldn't be in there if it wasn't for Chad Knauss. Mm-hmm. So I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I heard something that uh, all of Jimmy's wins, what do you have, 83, 84 wins or something like that, all of his wins came with Chad Knauss as his crew chief. And Chad Knauss... All of his wins except for one. He had one race that he won without Jimmy, but everything else was with Jimmy. So yeah. I'm like you. I think uh, it's very fitting. It's fitting for them to go in. Donnie Allison should have been there years ago. Yeah. But uh, and and they beat out. I guess. And I don't know how this Hall of Fame stuff works because I don't really follow it a whole lot. You know, I see who gets inducted, but I don't see the inductee. Po- the, yeah, there's only the like policy. 51 or 57 ballots or yeah. something like that they get cast. And I heard some of the names that were on the ballot for this year, and it was, kind of surprised me, you know, because Ricky Rudd was out there. He he didn't make it, so I'm sure he'll be on the ballot again next year because he's going to get in at some point. It's just a matter of when, you know. Um, and there was a crew chief, Harry Hyde, who... I didn't know this until recently, but Harry Hyde, back in the day, he was the greatest crew chief. He was the Chad Knauss of the, Larry the Mack. 60s. He was the Larry Mack before Larry <laughs> Mack. Yes, that's exactly. And he was local. I didn't know that. That's the thing that I didn't know about. Harry Harry Hyde. He's old man Hyde's boy. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> and I didn't know he was. I didn't know he was local until recently. Where's um, he from? Louisville. Really? Yeah. I'll be there. Um, I was listening to something on the the Sirius XM. They have this thing. Um, Dave Moody has it. I don't know if it's one day a week or if it's an everyday thing, but they have this this little segment called uh, Speedway Legends. So they they talk to some of these drivers from the past and they talk about that, that career. He, he probably did some work at Louisville Motor Speedway. Well, I don't know if he did any work. I think he was before that time, but he they they had this segment on these. Speedway Legends, and they were talking to a guy named Charlie Glotzbach, who, his name is in the record books in NASCAR history. I mean, he was a NASCAR driver, and he was from around here. He ran at the Sports Drum Speedway in Jeffersonville. That's where he got his start. Um, And he ended up, and they mentioned Harry Hyde on that segment, and I was like, okay, I've, I've heard of that name. 
you know, I know who that is. And he said, yeah, he was just right across the river there in Louisville, so he would help me out whenever I needed help. I didn't realize he was right there in Louisville. And Harry Hyde is the real-life person, but they had a character of him on Days of Thunder, the Harry Hogg, which was the crew chief on Days of Thunder. That was Harry Hyde. I'll be damned. Yeah. So small it, world. It is. It's it's very small world. It's it's crazy how that stuff kind of stuff comes together. But he was on the ballot. Harry Hyde was. Um, Ricky Rudd. I think Neil Bonnet. I'm surprised Neil ain't in there already. Yeah, Neil should be in there. Yeah. You know, I liked I like Neil. Um, he was just one of them quiet. He talented. seemed like he was a he was a polite driver, you know, <laughs> but he was talented he and he could win. Yes. Yeah. Um, so but, there's some still out there, but yeah, I think this was a a fitting class. Yeah, I mean, I'll if, just say if, that. I mean, Donnie should have been in there years ago, but he's in he's in there now. You yeah. know, and here's my thing to the NASCAR Hall of Fame ballot casters. Is do it while they're alive. Yeah. Give them that pat on the back, especially the old timers mm-hmm. that were turning wrenches. Because they're the ones and, that developed this sport. Right. I mean, they were turning wrenches. They were. They were putting the sport before they were putting themselves and their family. They yeah. um, a lot of them guys were divorced and, you know, stuff like that because their wives and kids didn't like that they were doing this, every night of the week mm-hmm. and. They put our sport first on the front burner. Yeah. I mean, they invested their life in this. Yep. So do it while they're alive. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. They definitely should be. And and like you said, it's fitting that Jimmy and Chad go in together. I mean, it's They just, couldn't have it, done it without. They wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame without each other. Yeah. So they need to go in together. I agree with that. Yeah. So there was that news today. Um, I think that's pretty cool. I never was a big Jimmy fan. No, I'm the same way. I mean, he drove a Chevy and that's so great. Yeah. So, I mean. <laughs> well, and I wasn't really a big Jimmy fan just because... You was an Earnhardt fan. I was an Earnhardt fan. And my very first race that I ever went to was at Martinsville. And Jeff Gordon ended up winning it. Earnhardt finished second. That was the only race. It was in 99 at Martinsville. And I think it was the fall Martinsville race. But uh, Earnhardt ended, he was two laps down, and he ended up coming back and finishing second. But he was really reeling in Jeff Gordon, and I thought for sure I was going to see Earnhardt win a race that I was at, my very first NASCAR race. I thought that's going to be awesome, but then it didn't happen. And then. Um, Nothing the, wrong with silver. Well, the second. <laughs> <laughs> a quote from one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Nothing wrong with silver. The second race that I ever went to was at Martinsville again. And Jimmy Johnson won. I think I seen Jimmy Johnson win two races that I was actually at, in which it really pissed me off in both of them because I just wasn't a Jimmy fan. There was just so many other drivers out there that I liked, and but didn't hate the guy. You just I didn't hate the fan. guy. I wasn't, right. right, I wasn't pulling for him, you know. Right. But yeah, I do like seeing Donnie Allison in there. Um, it's I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to learn about this Hall of Fame stuff and how it goes, and and. Not really the politics involved, because I don't think there's a whole lot of politics in there. I'm sure there is a little bit, but... They can only allow so many a year. Right. And there's so many people that's so deserving of it, you know, that you couldn't name them all. Yeah, so I think they got this class right. Absolutely. Um, Let's move on to Michigan. I'm already there. Yeah? What do you think about it? Well, I've already gave you who... uh, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, you can't you can't really pick a winner for this race. I mean, Kevin Harvick is a stud at Michigan. Do you want to talk uh, about fantasy and Michigan at the same yeah, time? Yeah, let's okay. do that. Let's do that. Because Kevin Harvick is a stud there. There's no yeah, he is. no way to. I don't care if you're a Chevy fan or Toyota fan or a you know Lugano fan or a William Byron fan. It don't matter what kind of fan you are. You cannot right. deny that Harvick is not a stud at Michigan. Mm-hmm. He and, owns that place. Right. And so, I mean. And yeah, this is going to be his last time there. Right. But who knows? Who knows what happens? This new car you levels know, the field. Jimmy Johnson retired too. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, might be one of them things where Kevin Harvick makes a special appearance. 
So, okay. But I mean, as my favorite driver, I've got to see him win numerous races. So, yeah, I've I've got to see him get <laughs> fucked out some new some races too. Yeah. And I, uh, <laughs> we won't talk about those bad days, right? But, um, <laughs> anywho, we, as far as Michigan goes, I, I think this is a race that Larson, Harvick, Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, Joey Logano can win. It's pretty much a super speedway. Right. I mean, it's a fast track. Anything it's, can happen. It's, it's a little bit flatter than your super speedways. Your your banking's not as extreme, but it is a very fast track. Mm-hmm. Um, so any of those five, six guys I just named could pull this win out. Yeah. And I'll even throw Byron in there. Yeah, Byron's on a roll I mean, this year. Kyle Busch. I mean... I think Truex could win. I mean, as good as he's doing lately. Right. But, I mean, there's so many people that could win this race. Yeah. But here's what's not discussed very often, except for on the Ride the Wall podcast, mm-hmm. is give me two dark horses. On... At Michigan? Yeah, at Michigan. Uh, possible winners, but not likely. Michael McDowell, just because he does really good on these super speedways. Um, And I would have to throw Bubba in there, just because of the same thing. Toyotas are fast. He has, um, he just has a knack for these super speedways. He was one of mine, too. And, And they're both right there. Well, just and, on the plus side of that bubble, so my, they need to win. And mine it. was Bubba and Brad Kozlowski. Yeah. Because Brad Kozlowski is a super speedway stud. Yeah. You know, I mean, he sees he's he, playing chess out there, and he sees these moves that these guys are making yeah, a lap before they make it. Yeah, he's playing know? chess. Everybody else is playing checkers. Mm-hmm. You know, so he, you know, he could. I think Brad could. He's not one of the favorites. I will say in the, in the. NASCAR fans eye. Yeah. Right now. But it would not surprise me to see Brad or Bubba really pull something out just because of the train racing effect. Yeah. You know, you get a group of three, four, five Fords up there, three, four, five Toyotas up there, and one of these guys that's that's what to me, that's what makes Brad so special is you watch all these super speedways over the years and you see it at Talladega, Daytona. I mean, you might as well throw Atlanta in there now too. Yeah. You know, so I mean, even Michigan. But you throw these drivers out there, and when it comes down to one to go, and they're lined up fifteen deep <laughs> on you know three lanes. Most of the time, two lanes, because it's going to end with a green-white checker. We know that. Yeah. So, but it don't matter if it's McDowell. It don't matter if it's Blaney or Logano or Elliott or Larson. Nobody times their exit out of that train better than Brad Kozlowski. He knows, because you see so many of these talented drivers jump out of the line to try to get out front and don't usually succeed at it. But anytime Brad is the first one to jump out of that line, you can count on that win. It's like it, the dude just knows. I don't know what it is that he's got that these other guys don't have. Yeah. But it's like if he's the first one to jump out of that line, he's going to win that race. You can put your money on it. That would be something to watch. Yeah. Something we'll to see watch. if it happens. See if it happens. Because I don't – I'm not – I'm not doubting any of that. Um, there's something in that man's brain. Mm-hmm. That, because, I mean, there's people that jump out of line before him, and we've seen it in, over the past three or four years. They run up a couple spots, and then they fall back. Right. Or the wreck happens, you yeah. know. But when Brad is the first one to jump out of the line, he always wins that race. Hmm. Because usually it's because he's already got, he knows when to go. Mm-hmm. And he sees somebody jump out of the line before them, and he's like, shit. You know, and it's not because he wanted to go. It's because he knew it was the wrong time. Yeah. Well, you heard it here first. Yeah. Folks. So, Count on it. And we'll, we'll see that at Michigan. We'll look for that at Daytona. I mean, I, I think you're right. I'm not doubting any of that. 
Um, let's talk about let's talk about this fantasy stuff because you got a text earlier. We're recording this on Wednesday, so we can't really talk about. No, we can who's... talk about it. It just won't be posted till Thursday. Right, because I've I've already made my pick. I'm not changing it. I've picked Kevin Harvick, and I've had that penciled in for months, and I've said it here numerous times over the past few weeks that I'm locked into Harvick at Michigan. That's, yeah, you, that's... you slated that one in. You... Yes, I'm not changing it no matter what. But you just got a text about. In the twenty, <laughs> if you go back about forty minutes ago in the in the episode and hear Chad cussing and laughing uh-huh. at the same time, it's because of this text you got <laughs> from HR Scotty. He was he was sending in his pick, and what did that say? And and, and we we discussed this before you say what his pick was. We discussed this beforehand, and I've, you know, me and HR we talk every day, and and I told him for weeks. I'm taking Harvick at Michigan. That's where I'm I'm burning him out at. I'm burning him at Michigan. He says, I know where I'm burning. I'm using Harvick, and I'm going to burn him at, and it's not going to be at Michigan. So I said, okay. And I thought, I w- earlier today, I was thinking, and I told you this before we went on the air here, I, I was thinking, what do I do if Scott does take Harvick? Just... For one of two reasons, to either mess with me, mess with my head, or to play defense, because I was right there on his back bumper last week. He was the only (laughs) one that beat me. And now, Scotty has raised two spots. He's up to fourth. He's doing really good. I'll give you credit, Scotty. You're doing good. He's up to fourth. He's got Hunter behind him, and I'm tied with Mama Lou. I'm tied with her for sixth place. So we're only three points behind Hunter. We're going to be the next to pass Hunter. Um, and then, and I've got my. You're only I've nine got points my, behind HR Scotty. I'm only nine points behind him, and I tell you, I have had my eyes locked in on him for about two weeks now. And who did? And Scotty turned in his pick, right? Who did he pick? Number four, Harvey. That son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, so, a, so I for the people who don't know how the league works, I mean, <laughs> oh even if Harvick <laughs> wins, Chad can't pass him. I'm going to stay nine points behind him. <laughs> yeah, because they picked the same driver. <laughs> so, this is proof. <laughs> I'm just throwing this out there. <laughs> I laugh, but I don't really know how I feel right now. I my emotions feel my emotion <laughs> <laughs> my emotions haven't caught up with me yet <laughs> because because look this isn't retire this isn't retirement money or nothing no, like that it's this pride. league is fun and it's mostly pride that's all it but is yeah it's a uh, it's one of them things to where you will get little jabs like this through the season <laughs> <laughs> to where you know Chad has Chad knew at Michigan he was going to pass he was going to pass or catch H.R. Scotty. I was passing him at Michigan. Right in my head, I was passing him because right. I had Harvick. Right. I mean, you can't get a better pick than that. That's what I thought. And just just to be that dick, <laughs> I'm going to text him right now. Just to be that dick. HR chose the number four car as well. <laughs> he texted me. You see the bottom there? <laughs> Got you pretty good, didn't I? And about five laughing faces behind it. <laughs> yeah, he did get you pretty good. Hmm. So I can't tell you what I'm texting him because it's. <laughs> I want to. So me and mom, me and Mama Lou, <laughs> yeah. me and Mama Bo, me and Mama Lou both took Chevrolets. So that's going to be interesting because it's me and third Scott and fourth, and you and Mama Lou are tied for sixth. So I, I mean, never thought I'd be up there tied with Mama Lou. Right, she was on such a roll. Yeah, 
I mean, I mean, she's still not doing bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. I mean, she's forty five points away from first place. Yeah. And we still got four races to go. Yeah, she fell a couple spots this week, but that happens. I don't even remember who she had. I'll tell you here real quick. She had Elliot, I think. She might have. No, she picked Bowman. Okay. Yeah, she had Bowman. Okay. <clears throat> so she dropped a couple spots. Uh, Scotty went up a couple spots. He was the only one that picked the winner last week with Busher. Uh, there was two people, me and uh, I think it was Chris. I'm wanting to say it was Chris that picked Hamlin, but... I don't remember. Seems like Jason H. picked him. He might... Well, hold on. I could tell you that, too. No, it was Chris. Was it? Yeah. So we've got two people in the 400 Club now. Well, I think we all kind of seen that coming with Ty, Mike. Ty, Ty, <laughs> yeah, with Mike, we expected it. It's Mike R, and I I'm, I don't know what Mike R's last name is, and I don't want to know, but I, I view it as reverse. Mike reverse. <laughs> <laughs> Just going backwards. <laughs> But Tyler joined him, you know, and Tyler, me and Tyler talk, you know, three or four times a week. Mm -hmm. And, and Tyler's, you know, he's been in this with me since I started this NASCAR league and he keeps up with it really well, but he's just having one of them seasons like you had last year where it does not matter who you pick. It's It's, just just shit. Yeah. It's just shit. And, (laughs) and that's what, that's what's fun about this league is Mm -hmm. a lot of it's luck. I mean, Especially with this new car, man. Right. A lot of it's luck. And, there's, you know, you look at even Mike R. You know, he's been auto-picked every week since, like, the third week, fourth week. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he's burnt studs. You know, he's getting people that are leading the points every week. And he and is way back in the Yeah, he, he's just getting nailed with horrible points. Yeah. So, I mean, it, that just tells you even picking the most qualified drivers doesn't always work. No, it don't. But it's it's picks like what HR made last week on a busher. Mm-hmm. Something you can pull out of your hat. Yeah. And he makes it happen. Yeah, you pick something that you think is solid and hope for the best. Right. It's really all you can do. You know, and, and that's why Daytona scares the hell out of me. Well, and I mean, turn one at Indy Road Course scares the hell out of me. Exactly. You know, because you don't know what's going to be on the other side of that. Well, I mean, any of the road courses scare the hell out of you because, I mean, yeah, there's not a lot of speed there, but there's a lot of twists and turns. Mm -hmm. And how many times have we seen them go into a road course turn three wide and somebody gets spun around and dumped? You know, you can be in the top five with three to go Mm -hmm. and get dumped just like that, you know, and now you're sitting 18th or 19th. Yep. Yeah, because, I mean, this Indy Road Course especially, I mean, it's got the Turn 1, who we've seen a lot of controversy <laughs> out of that last year. Right. With uh, Reddick and Chastain. Um, then you've got little things like, what was it, uh, was it a couple years ago, one of them little, uh, they call them turtles. Yeah. Come loose. Yeah. And it took out half the field. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think Logano was running pretty good in that race a couple years ago, and then, he ended up in the tire barrier on the, the way by the, the wall, end. you yeah. know, just because one of these turtles come loose. So anything can happen, you know. So it's not always the big name drivers. No, just, just because, them. like this week, we've got Harvick at Michigan. I mean, that's he's like you said, the most solid pick you can have. Right. I mean, out of the last ten races, there, he nine times he has finished in the top ten. I'll take that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Out of the last ten races, nine times mm-hmm. he's got top tens. But then, so that's silly. not. That, I mean, that's that's including wins and top fives. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's that's my goal as a fantasy player is to get a top ten every week. That's how I go into this. That's that's pretty much what I do. I'm just looking for a top ten. Right. If I can average a top ten every week, I'll be all right. Yeah. I mean, I've got I'll one win right now. And we're going to go into the Jays. I mean, that's yeah. stupid. I'm in that's third. That's all I've got. You know? I mean, Josh, who's in front of me, 10 points ahead of me in second. He's got six. Six wins. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I've got one, and I'm 10 points behind him. Yeah, I was looking at that today. Josh, 
just speaking of you and Josh, second and third. Josh is second, you're third. He's got 13 top 10s where you got 14. He's got 10 top 5s where you've got 6. And he's got 6 wins to your 1. But he's only 10 points. Yeah. No, something's weird. Got a glitch. Either I wrote it either I wrote it down wrong on the board or something with this because I think he's 15 points ahead of you cuz right there it says he's got 233. Yeah. Or you got 248. I think I probably just wrote it down wrong. But uh but, yeah. 15 points ahead and and he's got that many more, more top wins. fives and five wins. Five more wins. Than five you. more wins than you. Right. But that just goes to show you when you have a bad race like my bad race might be 15s. His yeah. bad race might be 38s. Right. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. It's it's crazy. That that's why uh, you know you can see the strategy there, you know, and and I'm going to say 85% luck and 15% strategy there because he could have picked Kyle Busch on one of those races. And Kyle Busch got crashed out, mm-hmm. and he got thirty eighth. And I took a Almirola and got twelfth. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's not a top ten, but, but it's my bad ra- my bad race is a lot better than his bad race. Yeah. Even though he picked a a perfect driver for that course. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it just. I agree with you. It's eighty five percent luck and fifteen skill a uh, skill. Yeah. But. Uh... I was looking, when I updated the points here, I noticed that uh, not a lot of movement. No. You know, like last week we I, seen some plus fours, some minus fives, well, whatever. But We both is... said it on the podcast. We expected a lot of movement after Richmond. Mm-hmm. And we didn't see it. No, you know, it was didn't a, happen. Because usually, because usually Richmond is one of those caution field races. Yeah. And it just wasn't, so it affects everything. You usually expect a lot of... A lot of Beating and banging. At the short tracks, yes. Yeah. And and it just wasn't there. Just wasn't there. But uh, It's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah. Hmm. I think we'll see it this week. I'm still mad about HR picking picking <laughs> Kevin Harvick. He did that for one reason <laughs> and one reason only. Even if he even if he burnt him. He it was more important to him to piss you off <laughs> yeah. than it was to save <laughs> Kevin Harvick for the chase. <laughs> That's a relationship that me and HR have. <laughs> have had for 20 years. <laughs> Probably more than that. That's what, yeah. Uh, Mama Jess was happy. She moved up a couple spots. Yeah. She is happy about that. She was asking me, she's like, what should I do? What should I do? I pick said, I don't know. Pick what a you, winner. Yeah. Do better is what you need to do. Right. That's what I told her. Just do better. Um, but no, I said it just depends on what you're, you know, I mean, you have to... You have to lay out a vision for your for your playoffs, and you have to know where do you want to start that, where do you want to finish that. And, you know, I mean, you have to adjust because I told her like like the strategy that I laid out to you last week as far as picking duds over studs right now right. because she is in nineteenth place. She moved up two spots from twenty first, but you know, one good race and she could move. She could still move up three or four spots. I said you still have potential if if you do really good in these next four races you have the potential to be right around 10th to 12th if you do really good you you can't have a bad race and you can't predict it no so. <laughs> you can't you just kind of got to roll with the punches you have to with four races to go you have to decide your strategy and go with it and and stick with it so if you're going to pick the studs and try to get up to 10th tenth, 10th tenth place before the playoffs start that's fine but that's going to hurt your picks after the playoffs start you know what i mean you're not going to have as many studs yeah. or you can sacrifice it and and then try to work your way up after the chase starts i said so that just really depends on what you want to do you know um, yeah we're kind of at that point with four races left before the chase starts myself i waited for michigan I already knew who I was going to take to a point. So I, I've got my notebook paper at home, and it's got it's got Michigan, Indy Road Course, Watkins Glen, Daytona. Mm-hmm. 
I left those four races blank. And then underneath of it, I wrote the 10 races in the chase. I looked at who I had left, and I started filling in from Phoenix back. Phoenix is where the championship is being raced at. So I started at the end mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and put who I wanted there, then went up to Homestead, Miami, put who I wanted there, you know, and so on and so forth. And then I seen who I had left. Yeah. And I said, so I've got to choose between these drivers for these four races right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's time. Mm -hmm. and, and, but that's how I do my season. Right. I'm, I'm kind of the same way. We get about... I probably pick my championship driver just a little bit before Michigan. Um, so I have who I feel is going to win the championship. And I'm, I'm the same as you. When it comes time to fill out them playoff picks, my championship pick is, is at Phoenix. Because that's who I think is going to win it. Right, so. but, but let's keep in mind, too. I mean, let's say... The four going to Phoenix to fight for the championship are Logano, Byron, Blaney, and Truex. Those are the four going to Phoenix to fight for the championship. If I save Harvick for Phoenix, where he dominates like he does Michigan, mm -hmm. the, out of the four championship drivers, it don't matter if the the. Whoever finishes the best out of the four wins the championship, right. period. It don't right. matter if they finish 34th, 25th. 35th, 36th, and 37th. Mm -hmm. Whoever finishes the best out of those four wins the championship. Yeah. If Kevin Harvick wins the race, that still helps me fantasy-wise. Right. It's not about which four are in the championship. Yes. I'm, I'm explaining that for people that aren't familiar with the league. You don't have to pick a driver that is in the championship race. You don't have to pick a driver that's you don't have to in pick one of them final four. One of them sixteen. Right. You know, in any of these ten races, you don't have to pick one of those sixteen drivers. Yeah. And and to add to what I was saying, <clears throat> I I pick who I think is gonna win it. Like for me this year, I hate to say this early, but I think Kyle Bush is right there. And I've, I've said this for most of the year. I think Kyle Busch is going to do enough to get to that next level. Just He might not go over and above. I just think he's pissed. Yeah, and I mean, he's, he's going to prove a point. Him. He's going to prove a point. And I think he I think he very well could be the champion. But there's a few other drivers that could be also, like, like a Kyle Larson or a William, William Byron, Byron or a Martin Truex. So all four of them guys, in my mind, have a chance to win so i'm my strategy is i'm going to try to leave those four guys open and i am going to leave phoenix open right now so i'm going to try to as because when they're racing and this is why i do this i'm, I'm going to leave phoenix open that way as it gets closer I can kind of narrow down who of those four guys that I think is going to be there, who is going to be at Phoenix with a chance to win the championship. So let's say, as it plays out, let's say Larson, Truex, and Bush are the three that still have a chance. Of my initial four, those are the three that still have a chance. So, because when we get to Phoenix, the other guys on the track race them different. You know, if you're one of them championship fours, they're going to let you go. Yeah, you They're, don't, they're you not going to race you tight. They're not going to put you in the wall. They're going to kind of let you go. They're going to let those four guys settle it. They're going to stay out of the way. And that's why if, if I have two or three of those guys to use, I want to use one person that's in the championship four at Phoenix. You know what I mean? Because the rest of the field is going to let them go. They're not going to get in their way. Right. They're not going to hold them up. And I think that has a lot to do with... <laughs> she's having fun, whatever she's yeah. doing. Yes, she is. <laughs> um, got the grandkids here. She's uh, running up and down the hallway laughing about something. Yeah. Probably Have chasing more. a dog. Hey, 
She's living her best life. She is. But uh, that's that's always been my strategy is to try and have at least a couple of options open for that championship race just because of that fact. But that see, and, and usually I'm, I'm right there on board with you. Because those championship four are going to finish towards the front. Right. Because they but, let them go. But this year's different. Because what what's the most profound thing with Phoenix International Speedway? What do you mean? I mean, Kevin What's, Harvick dominating. Well, Kevin Harvick is pretty good. He's pretty he, good. He dominates there. it. I mean, he's. I mean, shit. He's got like. Set. Dominate as far as wins. Yeah. When you look at who's got the most wins at Phoenix, it's Kevin Harvick. It could be. I don't know. No, I know. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. This ain't a question. I know. But, <laughs> but I mean, the guy's got like eight wins there. You right. know, and you know, I mean, over the past couple of years, he hasn't because of these cars. Yeah. But here's my philosophy going into this year's different, and I agree 100 percent with your strategy because I most years I'm right there with you. But this is Kevin Harvick's retirement year. Phoenix is the last race of the season. He knows when he gets in that car. This is this is my last ride. Make it a good one. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking have fun. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I think he'll be that guy that closes out Phoenix this year. I hope you're right. Because even though I don't have him anymore to pick, but. I, just for Kevin Harvick, I hope you're right. Right. But I, I just, I see that being the storybook ending, and I'm that guy, you know, especially with my, I, don't, I mean, I wouldn't care if it was Chase Elliott at Watkins Glen, I'd say the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But that's just how I see it coming to a close. If he, don't, if he does not have a win when they get to Phoenix for the last race of the season, I think he's going to put on a seminar for those 37 other drivers yeah. on how to do this shit. So you think no matter what, it's yeah. going to be Kevin Harvick at Phoenix. Absolutely. Yeah, you could be right. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> um, I'm just looking at these points, and I'm thinking, man, there's still a lot of close close uh, people there's there's not too many gaps still I mean you get to the bottom you know I mean there's Paul and Jeff 22 and 23 there's like a 30 point gap so um, it's a pretty good gap but look look at numbers in the point standings look at 1 to 14 not a big difference for 14 spots. Not at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, what are we looking at? 60 points? Yeah. I gotta fix this. I gotta fix this. I have Josh at 238, and actually he's got 233. So I have to fix that. Alright. It don't take a lot to get 60 points. At all. No, I did it numerous times within two races last year. Right. <laughs> so, I mean... We've only got 26 people in the league in spots number one where Joe T's at to number 14 where Mofat's at. It's 60 points. Yeah. You know. That's, I mean, that's, that's pretty tight for that's 14 insane. people. Yeah. It's crazy. So. It's it's weird how. It's anybody's This season. game is this fantasy league. I know this. Some people might be playing the NASCAR fantasy, and that's a totally different thing because you got five different drivers and a garage pick and all that stuff. And I may look at getting into that next year. I don't know. But this one right here that we're playing in is so much fun just because it's simple and it's close. Yeah, it makes it that way. Yeah. I mean, you're going to go at the very end of this. When we go into Phoenix, we're going to have... Probably six people that can win this thing. Yep. And you're going to have highs and lows all season. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, Earl, it wasn't long ago. I was talking Earl off the the ledge because he he had a bad race. And I don't remember who he picked. But I think it was Jimmy Johnson. He finished dead last at Coke 600, I think it was. Um, 
and it dropped him like four or five spots, put him down around 17th spot or something like that. And he's already recovered. He's in 10th right now, but he was up to like 7th just a couple weeks ago. So, And look at Mama Lou. She's another one. She, yeah, was, she was down there. She was at like 24th or 25th spot earlier this year. And she's, she's been up to 3rd yep. just last week or two ago. So it's crazy, the ups and downs, like you were saying, the it's highs emotional. and the lows. And it's like, yeah, you have one bad race and you're thinking, oh, my God, I suck so bad. And it's like, I just, what am I going to do now? And then I can't tell you how many times. I've about had to buy a new TV because I'm sitting here watching the race. Stand, I don't even sit when I watch some of these races. Like when I watch, when I watch Talladega, when I watch Daytona, I'm standing in my living room floor in front of my TV watching these guys race. And if one of my guys is in the big one, I've thrown my beer. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, I, I don't hit my TV and I don't hear my deer mounts and I don't hit my kids yeah. and Lisa. So, I mean, as long as it hits something... We try not to, anyway. Right. If you do, it's accident. Right. Right. (laughs) That's what it tells cops, anyway. Right. (laughs) Sorry, officer, didn't mean to hit my deer, man. (laughs) I seen three of them. I I ain't for the one in the middle. (laughs) Not really, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you've got... I mean, not only are you cheering for your guy. You know, all of us fans have your guy. Yeah. And, um... But you're also cheering for and rooting against people that you might generally cheer for because somebody in the fantasy league right in front of you or right behind them took you. Took oh, yeah. Them, you know, and it's... I'm going to tell you what I do on race day. Well, I, I, I work on Sundays, so I don't usually get to see the races live unless they are a night race. But I record it and I watch it after I get home. And I watch it from green flag to checkered flag. So... I know what's going on, and and I don't miss anything. But uh, I have, I bring my board to wherever it is, whether I'm watching it in the living room or the bedroom or wherever. I bring the board in there because I write down who picked who on this board, and I know at any point in the race, like for example, like this week I'm tied with Mama Lou, so I'm gonna find out who she picks after the picks are final. I'm gonna write it down on the board. And I'm either going to pull, I'm probably going to pull against whoever she picked just so I can move up some spots, you know. I'm looking at two or three spots ahead of me. I'm definitely looking at H.R. Scotty all the time. Yeah, even though this week, this week, no, not this week. <laughs> Sound good. But, uh, you know, I'm looking at two or three guys ahead of me or spots ahead of me. And I'm looking at two or three spots below me to make sure I don't fall, you know. And, and we could be halfway through the race, and I'm like, okay, if, if it ended right now, this is where I'm going to be. This is where I'm going to be. At. And I'm, I'm putting all that stuff through my head. And it's just emotional roller coaster. Cause, you know. <laughs> but you know what? I mean, I remember watching NASCAR races on TV before we started this NASCAR Fantasy League. Yeah. And it was fun mm-hmm. because we've always been race fans. So, I mean, but when you turn that race on every week, you're cheering for your one, two, three drivers. You know, your guys. You know, mm-hmm. your team. Like me, I'm a Stuart Hall's guy. I'm cheering for Harvick, Priest, Almarola. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're cheering for those guys. Yeah. And same with the Hendrick family and the Gibbs family. You know, you cheer for your guy and that team. But it is so much more intense Am I right? Oh, yeah. I definitely. mean, it's so much more Way intense more. when you've got something like this going on. Yeah. You know, there, it's just so much more emotional. You know, there's times Lisa, like usually on Sundays, Lisa would go, she'll go shopping or she'll go spend time with her mom or something like that because she knows Sunday's race day to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like she knows Justin's going to be cooking something on the grill for himself, drinking beer, and watching his race all day. So I'm. <laughs> I'm heading She's out. doing her thing. Right. She comes in the door and it's like, God damn it. I mean, it's a <laughs> fucking true ex just wrecked. And he, I had him picked in the fantasy league. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It, <laughs> I do the same thing. Right, right. But, you know, I mean, it's it's so much, I mean, it's so much fun. You're so much more invested. Yeah. 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 And, and, yeah, I was going to say something to that. But, I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, even like, H.R. Scotty, he did, he did, uh, he does, um, fantasy football every year. Mm-hmm. 
and I think it was. He's pretty good at that too. Ain't yeah, he? he is. Yeah, and but it's. I, but he's also a Cincinnati fan. Right. And that's just not acceptable. Well, that's I'm between just you and that him. Out. Yeah, uh, that's I between me and you, Scotty, because you picked Harvick this week, and I'm just gonna. I'm just going to ride your I don't, ass. I, I, you're a UofL <laughs> fan. He's a Cincinnati fan. I know all that. But, Doug, you. But, you know, it's I'm not one of them college football <laughs> right, kind of guys. Right. I like three sports. NASCAR, NFL, and figure skating. And <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't watch football. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, it's, a, it's one of them things of you and Scott – have had that rivalry for a long time. Yeah. But I mean, Scott didn't even watch NASCAR a few years ago. And, right. Uh, but not only does this make watching a race so much more intense, it brings people into the sport and it gives them, you it know, gives them a reason to cheer for somebody. Right. It gives them a reason. They don't know who Logano is, but now they picked him. So now they're going to learn who he is. Right. You know and, what I mean? Yeah. And that's, that's what I love about the fantasy aspect of it. It's only $50, you know? So, I mean, like I said, nobody's retiring off this shit, you know? So it's, it's, uh, it's about creating new fans and keeping that fire burning for the sport, you know? Yeah. And we are opening this up to everybody. Online. Everybody. In the world, you can be yeah the big, what uh, Budapest, the Belgian badass Belgian badass can yeah. get in yeah that Belgian badass he's gonna get in this I think he will, um, but we're opening up to everybody and because we want to see this thing grow we want to see the fans of NASCAR grow we want we just we just want to see the excitement you know um, these days are not the peak of nascar but i see it on the upswing yeah it's, it's gonna come around again yeah I mean, and and i think fantasy has has a little bit to do with that you know so we're opening like we said we were opening but, this up well, to everybody I mean, your son eric that does all of our online stuff everything mm-hmm. i mean he's been such a huge part of riding the wall mm-hmm. you know he's gonna be in it next year and you know he's just now getting back into it you know and i mean Right. You were still watching it when he was a young kid. You know, I know you got out of it a little bit shortly after. Yeah, for a few years Dale, there I did. Dale passed, you know. Mm-hmm. A lot of people did. And, uh, you know, that's that's what I want my kids to do as well when they get to that age. I want them to be like, hey, Dad. You know, because they'll occasionally sit down and watch a race with me for a little bit. And you just, it's hard to explain to your kids when you're watching it on tv i mean you got this camera following this car going around the track it don't look like they're doing 70 miles an hour right you know what i'm saying on tv yeah but when you go and you see it and it's such a life-altering experience to see how fast these guys are going and what they're doing and then you throw in skin in the game with the fantasy league on top of it and it makes you an instant fan oh yeah and i'm gonna tell you this I've been a NASCAR fan all my life. Drove Na- I, I was going to say drove NASCARs. I haven't drove NASCARs. <laughs> I've drove race cars. Right. You know, um, at local dirt track and stuff. So I have an understanding of what these cars go through and what these drivers go through and this and that. But I had no idea how fast these guys are going until we went. I mean, I've been to some NASCAR races, but I've been to Kentucky, Martinsville, Indy when they were on the Indy when they were on the on the uh, brickyard on the oval, but when we went to Bristol night race the first time we went, yeah, and to see these guys on such a small track, going so fast, it was just like holy crap! It it changed my view, yeah. and I was experienced. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, this is a half mile track, thirty three degree banks. These are the same banks that Talladega has on a half yeah. mile track. Mm-hmm. That's and why it's called guys, the last great Coliseum. They're doing 160 miles an hour. They are hauling you know, around that track. You, like you, if you cannot like you and I usually sit on the back stretch, mm-hmm. and pretty damn close. We sit in row one mm-hmm. last year, I think it was. Yeah. And you can't look right. You can't look at the track right in front of you. See where the drivers are at. You have to look on the front stretch when you're sitting on the back stretch because they're going so fast. You all you can see is a color. You can't right, even see a, a number. You can't see a number. You can't see a car. Mm-hmm. You have to look over on the front stretch 
to see yeah. where, what the order of these cars. And and if you're if you're familiar with like a local asphalt track, you know, like for us it was Sports Drome in Jeffersonville. These guys are slowing down so much for a turn that it's crazy. And and then you go see these NASCAR guys at, at Bristol. They are just hauling the mail going into these turns, and it's like, holy crap. I mean, you look at this, they're, I mean, they're staying in fifth gear all the way around that track. Oh, yeah. You know, so, I mean, they're it's crazy. They're pushing 850 horsepower all the way around this track on 33-degree bags. They're just like one of them pennies you drop in the thing at the mall that just, you know, and they gain speed as they go around, the more mm-hmm. they go around. That's the centrifugal exactly, force type right, of thing. Yeah. That's exactly what they're doing, and they're holding these cars still. In a pack. In a pack, I mean, six inches off bumpers, six inches off somebody's door. You know what I'm saying? And they're, I mean, on slicks. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say If they don't give you a chubby. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I'm sitting here right now, right? and I ain't going to be able to get up for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Just talking about this. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say to anybody out there who's a NASCAR fan who wants to go to a race, try to get tickets to the Bristol Night Race. I wouldn't so much, I mean, we went to the Bristol Dirt Race, and it was pretty good. It wasn't But bad. that doesn't highlight the speed that these guys no, can carry around that track until the, you the, go to the night race on asphalt. The because, NRA night race is a once-a-year thing. It is, and it is amazing. It's fantastic. And when you do go, come and find Chad and Justin yep. in the grass parking lot across from the coliseum we'll be pretty close to the road yeah we'll be real close to the road guaranteed and you'll see the bush like cornhole boards out there yep you'll see the grill you'll see mama jess out there mm-hmm. stop, stop and say hi stop and say hi and challenge us to a game and we're gonna have t-shirts koozies koozies arm wrestling maybe yeah we might have some midget <laughs> well, we'll wrestling have, out there we'll have, the gun, we'll have the guns out for sure guaranteed you know? so okay <laughs> We never backed down from a good arm wrestle match. No, never did. Remember last year we went there was we were playing cornhole against some people, and there was some woman. They were just coming into the track. Some it was a guy and a girl, and the girl was in a passenger seat. And she hollered out the side window, "Hey, get them boards ready, cause I'm gonna beat your ass." Yeah, as I she did. drove by. Yeah. So I turned around. And I told her, "Come on." Yeah. I'm not backing down. Absolutely I'm not backing not. down from her. Nope. No, not at all. She never did show up. No. Nope. So if I hope you're gonna... she shows up this year, cause. Not only will she get schooled in cornhole, yeah. Mama Jess will tell her next time you raise your voice to somebody over here, it better be me. That's right. I mean, Mama <laughs> Jess don't take that shit. She ain't taking that shit. She's from Man Avenue in Austin. <laughs> she ain't taking that. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't kidding. <laughs> but no, that's that's about all I got to go on um, for this week. We didn't. We're, we're we're recording this on Wednesday, so we didn't get to. Um, say everybody's picks who who picked in the fantasy league. Uh, so you'll have to wait for Thursday at seven. Check it out on RidingTheWall.com. Um, I'm gonna give you a hard time all week, Scotty, about your pick. Just be ready for that. Got to get that out there. Um, what it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a real I, good one. I, I think we'll hopefully we see a bigger shift in points after michigan than what we did after richmond but yeah it's gonna be a faster race that's for sure oh, as long yeah. as weather permits uh, i i feel like with everything going on up canada all the fucked up wildfires and stuff canada they, has been a bunch of assholes this man, year they really have usually they? we're the assholes right. it's canada this year <laughs> they need to figure it out they do they <laughs> figure it out <laughs> But you think as happy as Canadians are, there'd be like a shit ton of volunteer firemen because they're all so happy and helpful. I think so. That, but apparently there ain't. Apparently there ain't no firemen no, at all in, no. in Canada. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, Michigan, it's going to be a good race. Go Kevin Harvick. I don't usually pull for a Ford, but I'm going to this week. Ford's, Ford's got a good chance as any this week. They do. They do. So. I'll give them that. It's a Chevy track. Yeah. But it could be yeah. a Ford driver. Could be, but I got Chase Elliott, so. That's weird. It is. I'm the Chevy guy picking a Ford. You're the Ford guy picking a Chevy. Yep. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes we just feel like putting a dress on. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm no. doing this week. I picked a Chevy. I'm putting a dress on. 
<laughs> you don't get that. Say, I don't usually feel that way very often, but hey, I felt yeah. like it this week. I'm, I'm not, not going to say anything if you feel like that. I'm, I mean, I might even put some heels on. I picked a Chevy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Find some size 13 heels. At, at All right, foot. I got some memes. I'm getting ready to let loose on this uh, <laughs> on this uh, chat room that we got. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, we'll see what happens this week. It's going to be a good race. I feel. I mean, we're get, the closer we get to that playoff cutoff, it's going to be even more hectic, crazy. But that that's also another great thing about going to the Bristol Night Race is it's a cutoff race. It's a it's a bubble race in the playoffs. Yeah. So I mean, it's best place to have a bubble race <laughs> is a super speedway or a short track. Yep. And so, Bristol is the best place to have it. So, yeah, if you're there, swing Look us by. Up. Look us up, stop by, say hi, don't be afraid, just stop on by. Yep. We'll talk to you, we'll play some cornhole. Drink some beers. Heck yeah. I'll let you do a belly shot. Big, yeah. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, won't, uh, I don't shave my belly, <laughs> so you might, <laughs> you might get a hair in your drink. But what is that belly button, a two-shotter? Uh, every bit of it. <laughs> but anyway, if but you yeah. want to do a belly shot, play some cornhole, stop by. The mm-hmm. so RidingYourWall.com. Hold on, what did you say? Ride, wall did you say podcast. Riding Your Wall? Riding the Wall okay, podcast. Riding the Wall. <laughs> I was like, we're not riding nobody else's wall. I know <laughs> that. No. <laughs> but yeah, it's, Michigan's going to be a good time. Stop by Bristol, see us. Um, that does it for this week. If you're going to the races anywhere, take somebody new. Like I said, it's always a good time. Always fun to see their expression on their face and... Uh, introduce somebody new to the sport yeah. it's always a good thing absolutely put it right in so, their face that's right talk to you next week